hi everyone welcome back to my youtube channel hope you all are doing well in today's video i will be talking about clinical laboratory services payment system let's get started clinical laboratory services are tests on specimens from the body such as blood or urine that are used to diagnose and treat patients under part b medicare covers medically re reasonable and necessary laboratory services that are ordered by a physician or a qualified non-physician practitioner when they are provided in a laboratory that is certified by the Center for Medicaid and Medicaid Services or CMS. With a few exceptions, Medicare does not cover routine screening tests unless directed to by law. Covered screening tests with some restrictions include those for cardiovascular disease and colorectal prostate and cervical cancer. Clinical laboratory services are furnished by laboratories located in hospitals and physician offices, as well as by independent laboratories. Services may also be furnished by laboratories located in dialysis facilities, nursing facilities, and other institutions, but frequently these tests are paid under other Medicare payment systems. The majority of laboratory services do not involve the work of a physician. These services are paid under the Clinical Laboratory Fee Schedule, or CLFS. Unlike most other Medicare services, there is no beneficiary cost sharing for Clinical Laboratory Fee Schedule, or CLFS services. Laboratory services that include physician work, such as surgical pathology, are paid under the fee schedule for physicians and other health professionals. Medicare sets payment rates for more than 1,600 Healthcare Common Procedure Coding System or HCPCS codes used in the CLFS or Clinical Laboratory Fee Schedule. A single HCPCS code may identify more than one testing method for a given substance or more than one substance analyzed by a single method. Setting the payment rates. Prior to 2018, clinical laboratory fee schedule or CLFS payment rates were largely based on historical laboratory charge data that were capped and then inflated over time. In response to evidence suggesting that Medicare CLFS payment rates were excessive, the Protecting Access to Medicare Act or PAMA of 2014 required the CLFS or Clinical Laboratory Fee Schedule to be based on private payer rates. Pursuant to Protecting Access to Medicare Act beginning in 2018, CMS sets CLFS rates based on the weighted median of private payer rates. CMS establishes a weighted median for each HCPCS code based on private payer payment rates and volume data reported by applicable laboratories. In order to be considered an applicable laboratory, an entity must meet the definition of a laboratory established by the Clinical Laboratory Improvement Amendments, or CLIA, Bill Medicare Part B under its own National Provider Identifier, or NPI, receive a majority of its Medicare revenues from the Clinical Laboratory Fee Schedule or the Physician Fee Schedule and meet the Low Expenditure Threshold. What is Low Expenditure Threshold? A laboratory meets the Low Expenditure Threshold if it receives at least $12,500 in Medicare revenues from the Clinical Laboratory Fee Schedule during the data collection period. A hospital outreach laboratory does not need to bill under its own NPI to be considered an applicable laboratory. Instead, such laboratories can be identified based on their billings under the CMS 145014X type of bill. For 2021, CMS established clinical laboratory fee schedule payment rates based on payments applicable laboratories received from private payers from January through June 2016, which is referred to as the data collection period. As required by statute, CMS established a phase in of the private payer based clinical laboratory fee schedule or CLFS rates. Specifically, payment rate reductions for an individual service are capped at 
10% per year from 2018 through 2020, 0% in 2021, and 15% from 2022 through 2024. The new CLFS payment rates are national and do not vary based on geography. For new laboratory tests and those for which CMS receives no private payer information, CMS establishes payment rates using crosswalking or gap filling methodologies. Crosswalking. Under the crosswalking methodology, the payment rate for a laboratory service is established based on the rate of a similar service or a combination of services. Gap filling is used when no similar service exists and involves setting payment rates on information such as charges, discounts to charges, and resources required to perform the test. In addition to changing the manner in which Medicare sets payment rates for laboratory services, PEMA or Protecting Access to Medicare Act also established a new subcategory of laboratory services referred to as Advanced Diagnostic Laboratory Tests or ADLTs to which special payment rules apply. ADLTs are tests that are only offered by a single laboratory and meet other criteria such as being an analysis of multiple biomarkers of DNA, RNA or proteins that provides new clinical diagnostic information that cannot be obtained from any other tests or combination of tests. The Clinical Laboratory Fee Schedule or CLFS payment rate for a new Advanced Diagnostic Laboratory Test or ADLT is equal to the product's actual list charge for three calendar quarters. After this time period, the payment rate for an ADLT is set at the weighted median of private payer rates, but unlike the payment rates for other laboratory services, CMS collects new private payer data and establishes a new payment rate for an ADLT every year instead of every three years. Beginning in 2018, Clinical Laboratory Fee Schedule or CLFS payment rates are not updated annually based on inflation. Instead, for most services, payment rates will be in effect for three years, after which CMS will institute revised payment rates based on new data collected from laboratories. The policies discussed in this presentation were current as of October 15, 2021 and reflect any relevant changes implemented in response to the COVID-19 public health emergency as of that date. This document does not reflect proposed legislation or regulatory actions. This is it for today. Thank you for joining me. If you found this information useful, please consider subscribing to my channel and leave me a few comments. Hope to see you next time. Bye now.